Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Friday, December 10th. It is 6.30 as I'm starting the video. Um, as always, don't forget to run your player a little faster than normal. 1.25 or 1.5x will work great for you. Um, we are uh, green across the board marginally this morning on futures, but uh, we know we've got the CPI print at 8.30, so I'm just taking, you know, these futures as, you know, they are what they are, but they're all going to change probably at 8.30, depending on what the market reaction is. I haven't even looked to see what uh, consensus is on that CPI number. Um, it really doesn't matter from the standpoint of, yeah, I mean, once it comes out, we'll, we'll get all that information, but it's the market reaction. That's the key, right? We want to see and react to whatever price movement that data point produces uh, against the backdrop of uh, the FOMC next week. Now, I'm sure Powell already knows what the number is, um, and, and they've already kind of set up their policy, but we don't so market participants are going to react to that number however they react so i'm not putting a whole lot of stock in you know futures being up 0.3 percent or something like that it, it really doesn't make that much difference so uh anyways uh over on the earnings front uh the only thing i saw for today was academy sports that's a name that that we've been in and out of over the last six months or so generally uh doing a good job but it's like a lot of stocks have run into a little turbulence over the last uh several weeks since thanksgiving and then uh you may want to review the earnings movers from last night uh chewy i uh, saw chewy got more or less killed Lululemon held its own. I didn't see a lot of aftermarket activity. Uh, Costco was down a little bit. Uh, you can see on the on the blog, on the calendar, on the earnings calendar, which which ones reported last night. Or you can always do a, um, you know, there's several websites that can show you gap up and gap downs pre-market. So not going to spend a lot of time there. We've got a ton of Gap trades on the board that are out there. Um, we'll show you one uh, after the after our our chart set today. That um, what was it? DocuSign, uh, pre pretty sinister bar yesterday that that got me and maybe some others too. But anyways, let's let's get into this. I wanted to spend just a moment. We talked yesterday and and actually the last couple of days on one of the most important things to recognize as traders uh, is to accurately assess market conditions. So let's just take back the, the calendar, if you will. Let's go back to Q4 2018. Remember, uh, you know, Powell made that comment, you know, we're on autopilot now and we're going to start jacking rates, remember? And the stock market went down like 20, 25% in three months in a straight line. I mean, just cascading uh, as the reality dawned on the market that things were changing, right? We had a very accommodative Fed all from the, the great financial crisis, adding liquidity, doing, um, you know, bond purchases and all that kind of stuff. And everything was fine until he said, we're changing direction. We're going to start uh, jacking rates. The market went in a tailspin and then Powell flinched uh, during Christmas of 2018 and did that Powell pivot right in January and went back to accommodation and so that was one episode where you as a trader and the market in general was a point in time where, hey, things are changing. So we, we go through 
uh, 19 and enter 20. And then we had the flash crash from COVID, right? And then that was another point in time where something changed. What changed? Powell and the government at large came out with the bazookas. Like the recession ends here. We're, we're throwing everything we got, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. The Fed, you know, doubled their balance sheet. They went from four trillion to nine trillion in a year, literally. And just, you know, everything we got. And the market responded to that. So March 20, April 20 was another inflection point. And if you were attuned or, you know, properly assessed market conditions, hey, something's changed. Yes, we just had a flash crash. But now, don't fight the Fed. Don't fight the government. They're going to reinflate everything like a bubble and throw everything at it. Get long. So now we go forward and now we got all this inflation, right? Um, and, you know, Powell, Powell's transitory, transitory, transitory until he gets renominated. And now it's, hey, you know, guess what? We're going to lose the word transitory. And by the way, we think we're going to accelerate our tapering. We're going to go from, you know, 12, 15 billion a month taper wrapping up in June to, you know, now let's go 30. So we wrap up in March. So then we can raise, you know, do our first interest rate hike to put the brakes on this runaway inflation. Now, whether Biden said, you know, when he invited him over to the White House, hey, I just wanted to let you know, Jerome, that, you know, I'm going to renominate you. Congratulations very much. You've done a great job. Now kill inflation because I can't have the whole country out in the streets with pitchforks screaming about, you know, every week they go to the grocery store and it's higher, right? So now we are at another inflection point. We have gone full circle from the 2020 crash to massive, massive liquidity injection. And now the, the, um, the spigots are going to be turned off. Now, some people say that, well, yeah, they're tapering, but they're still buying. The point is, you know, if you got a garden hose going full blast and someone is regularly turning turning the screws to close that off, liquidity will be decreasing. And so I think for us as market participants to accurately assess market conditions, we've gone, and we've talked about this before on individual stocks, etc. I think we're going to be transitioning from an easy trade the easy trade started in April of 2020. Get long, everything. It didn't really matter. Earnings, no earnings, junk stock. You know, the, the junkier the stock, the better. Zombie companies, you know, AAA companies, it didn't matter. Everything's going up. Now, we're at a transition point of hard, uh, easy trade to becoming a choppy more difficult trade as this liquidity begins to be withdrawn and whether that causes a, uh, I expect turbulence is what I expect. And I think at that conversation with Biden and Powell, it went something like this. Hey, Jerome, I need you to kill inflation. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Just remember though that uh, when I start raising interest rates, that's going to likely cause, uh, you know, market turbulence and probably a decline in markets. And then the president says, yes, I know, but there's a lot more people 
you know, that don't have stock market accounts than those that do. And if we got to do a 20% drawdown in the market to kill inflation and get back on track, we got to do it. So maybe the Powell put goes from 5 or 10% drawdown to 20%, right? We all know that the, the Powell put has been out there, Fed put, that as soon as anything happens, they come rushing back in. Well, maybe they don't rush in anymore until it's down 20%. So anyways, I think conditions are changing and I don't think you can just be blindly long at this point, even though we are closer to the highs. I've been telling you for a while, I think the Ponzi is over. And what I mean by Ponzi is massive valuations and no earnings. That's a Ponzi. That's ARC. That's all those high flyers. So I'm expecting those to proceed lower. And I think it's going to be harder for the quality companies just to keep legging higher. That doesn't mean we can't go higher. It just means I think we're going to have more choppy action. So enough of the philosophy and macro. Let's get into actual levels. SPY, two hour, big run off the floor. Flagging action, relatively nasty red bar yesterday to close the day, but we still have the flag intact. I think your key level is 466. You break 466, you're going to drop out of the flag. You're going to come down to the open gap. And uh, if there's any kind of energy behind that move, I think you'll go in to the gap and even potentially fill that before the FOMC next week. So I would be keying off of uh, 466. You can see here just granularity on the flag and you've got uh, the um, uh, open gap and everything uh, down below. So again, I think you got to key off 466. Anything below that I think is going to be uh, short term uh, bearish. Um, okay, moving on to the Qs. Uh, relatively worse performer than SPY yesterday. Uh, uh, tech had trouble. We had a reach up candle to start the day, reaching right up towards, I think, yeah, we got, uh, well, it said a high of 420 cents. So a reach up didn't quite get to this 401, which was this big line that we said, all those reactions we said we wanted to take out 401 to get, you know, kind of get going. We had a, had a reach up, but then it, it rolled over. And then when price dropped 398 and really specifically 396 here, it, it went pretty fast. So for today, I think we're back, uh, for all intents and purposes, back to saying you can stay long against the top of the gap at 393. But you break below, you got to, you got to, you know, turn your cap around. It's no longer bullish. Once you break down below 393, you're going to move into the gap. And I've got some intermediate points here. Don't get thrown off if, or, or be aware that there's some uh, intermediate little support levels here. For instance, going from 393 to 391, you can see here a line of reactions going back here support 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 resistance resistance so this 391 will be a relatively uh, big or important level so if you get short at 393 don't be flabbergasted if you get a little reaction off of 391 and then you're Your reaffirmation that the downtrend continues is, you know, you, you come down, you get a little bounce off 391, 
and then 391 breaks, then you got the next rug pull down to 388. So um, you can decide how to play out, play it if that scenario does in fact uh, play out today. Uh, on the bull side, you've got this level back up here at 396, 396.25 something like that where you could get a kickback rally uh say the initial knee jerk reaction this morning is is bullish get a little kickback up here the market opens there'll be a little uh, gap below then you could get a roll over here at 396 and then come right back down to 394 so that might be a scenario to keep in mind Going over to IWM, very, very, very uh, common technical price action. Why? Well, we had the we had the down move, and then we had the up move, and look at where it died. It died right at the gap. It spent. You know, how many touches did we have there? Four, five, six touches could not get through. That's always a sign, hey, we got we may have trouble. We saw the the 50 day moving average here was above as well as resistance. So that was a really important line. And I think we even talked about uh, the other day that Whenever you come up to a gap and you see it can't get in, it's always an objective trade to take the other side and say price is going to get rejected there. Uh, and when I say objective, that's not a promise that it works. All it is is uh, taking a shot at the odds that if a, a if price has spent the better part of two days trying to get into the gap, and can't do it, then it's telling you that there's a problem there. And hey, if you take the short side and then all of a sudden it breaks through, you just got to shrug your shoulders and say, that's trading. You took an objective shot. You got hit by a paper cut and then reorient yourself to the long side, especially if price were to get back above the 50-day moving average. That's always a uh, technical accomplishment for bulls when they can recapture the 50 from below. And then here's just some granular. Uh, actually, I don't even, now that I look at it, this, uh, where I've got this gap uh, isn't really drawn correctly. You can see here that there's some space there. Should be down a little bit closer. But that's neither here nor there. It fell. Now we're back in the, the gap from the other day, right at the midpoint. I think you can use this uh, 220.50 as your pivot today. I would expect, I would expect this to fill at this point. We may get a positive reaction this morning and then it roll over, fill the gap and then go up. A lot of different scenarios there, but the levels are very very clear and you know if you break the bottom of this gap then I would imagine you're going to come back at a certain point and retag this 213 at the prior low but first things first uh, pivot point at 220.50 and then take it from there uh, if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate your time this morning. I hope you're getting benefit from the commentary and the levels. I do my best each morning to help active traders find the objective levels so that you can build trust in those levels and then hone your execution skills around those levels. That's the one thing uh, you as a trader have to do on your own is that you know, once you have confidence in a level, are you going to be long or short? Are you going to honor your stops? 
when are you going to take profits, all that kind of stuff. Um, but half the battle is knowing where the levels are. And uh, I do my best to, to give you good ones that you can trust. Um, so I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell. The like button as well. And then you can jump over in the show notes. There's a link to the blog site where you can register for all my content and uh, uh, get everything sent right to your mailbox morning, noon, or night. Whenever I send something out, you'll get it. And then you'll also get an invitation to our trading room where you can join our community of traders that uh, are battling every day, win or lose. We're there for each other, and, and that's a, a, a really nice environment. And, of course, longtime listeners, thank you so much for the support. All right, let's get into Fat Man. Pretty much soggy yesterday. Facebook, again, got up to the gap and failed and started to roll over to a certain extent. I think your pivot point is 331. If it can even come down here towards uh, three, uh, what is that? 328 at this low, gather itself and go forward, that would be fine. But you lose this line here, this 328 line, you can see was an issue here, here, here and here. If you lose that, then most likely you're going to roll back down to 324 and potentially roll on back down to test this gap again. So really important for Facebook to hold the line here, get that upper gap filled, and then break out above 341 to be, you know, well on its way going back up to the highs. So kind of a soggy day yesterday in uh, fat man land. Apple continues to outperform. It was, yeah, I mean, it was down pennies yesterday, but really not down at all from the standpoint compared to the market. And you can see the series of uh, moves higher, gap, bull flag, gap, bull flag, move higher, bull flag, in my mind, 174 is your pivot this morning. And you've got a pretty sizable open area below. You can see the hole in the volume over price profile. If you're long, I think you got to have your stop just below 174 because if the market wobbles or gets squirrely on this CPI print, it would be nothing for Apple to come back to 171 on that break of 174. I mean, that can happen, you know, in a heartbeat. And still you would conclude, wow, Apple is still really strong. So you could have a $3 pullback in a flash and then have it stabilize or even come down here to the top of the gap and hold. And even from that standpoint, the chart would still be bullish. So what I'm saying here is this is all tactical stuff. And if you've been long Apple on the daily time frame or in a long-term account, this is nothing. But if you're actively trading and you got options for tomorrow or for today, excuse me, it's Friday, OPEX day, you can't hold on to that if you lose 174. In fact, at that point, I would be flipping short and go into lotto mode and shoot for a $3 move at a minimum. And then if you get lucky, if you're short and things really fall apart, that's where you would get a, you know, a lottery type payday if you flipped at 174 and then it you know rolled all the way down to 170 or 168 on a really really bad day but you know they call them lottos for a reason that's not what i would expect if there's turbulence i would expect it to hold the line at 171 on uh on a on a break of 174 and if it holds 
if there's a positive reaction, if it holds 174, you can be long against it. And certainly if it breaks out to blue sky, you can be long against the all-time high. Now, Tesla had a bad day yesterday. Got right up here to this big line of resistance that we had talked about at 1080. We noted all the uh, uh, reactions along that line. We had a reach up that failed and then it was just straight down the rest of the day. Uh, cut right back through this 1050 area and then right through. Actually, we had a couple bars where it hesitated at the gap but then moved below. And what I did was actually put on the fibs from this down move. So we had a, you know, a move down and then what amounted to a 50% halfback bounce where it rolled over again. So this morning, I think 1010 will be your pivot. But if, if price comes down, and breaks this 970 level, which wasn't the exact low, but it's where price had stabilized here. You can see four candles at 970. If that breaks, then you've got the A, B, C move where the C leg is going to be the same distance as the A leg. So we're at 1170 down to 970. That's $200. And then $200 from uh, 1080, give or take, puts you down in the high 800s, right? 200 from 1080 gives you 880. So that would be that would be the measured move target of an A B C move uh, with this structure, but that only triggers <clears throat> if you break 970. But you can see right here, you got a big gap from 950 down to 910, and then after that, you're only 30 bucks off the target. So there might be a um, bigger move coming on Tesla. Microsoft, soggy, but still holding in there. I would I would use 332 this morning as your pivot with the top of the gap at 330. And then more or less a, uh, I would call 338, like your big breakout because of this, all this resistance here. If it were to gather itself at 332 and grind its way up and eventually break out at 338 <clears throat> that would bode really well because this is a big line of resistance and uh you can see here it didn't even really make it that far it found trouble at 336 which we had marked but uh so use 332 this morning and then if it rolls over always be focused on the top of the gap Amazon soggy could not hold this 3,500. So I think 3,500 is your pivot. I'd like to see price get back above that and make a run for, for 3,540. If it can't, then you've got the top of the gap here at 3,460. That's uh, uh, basically $30 wide from 3,460 to 3,430. So you may get a little bounce off of that level and then come down or depending on how bad the, the uh, or how strong the selling is, it may go through that level. But on the downside, that's your first important uh, uh, level of concern. And I think even when we were back here, I said that I was thinking that this prior low would be tested at some point and that may be where we're going just you know thinking ahead this low certainly could be tested on a move through the gap and then come down here try it again and then go higher giving a like a double bottom look but that's all 
all speculation. For today, just worry about 3500 3490 right in that area as a pivot point. Google, use 29.55 right here. As long as it can hold that, it can go higher. But you lose uh, 29.55. Probably going to roll down here to this 29.20 support area. And then you've got the gap below. Netflix. This looks a lot like the Tesla chart, right? Um, a fast move down where it finds support, then a bounce, then a more or less unidirectional move uh, back down towards the low. Uh, and I found this really uh, interesting and, and a reason why I often keep old gaps on the chart because like here was the gap price filled it so you could have easily said okay well that gaps filled take it off the board you know and then forget about it and then come back up here and you like be saying you know why did price stop there I mean there's nothing there there's you know what's going on well there actually was muscle memory in price that it knew something was there and found a a level of resistance and then it rolled over so that may be something you want to do in your own charting uh to you know keep old gaps there for a while until you're convinced that you know price has moved above and below and it's no longer uh really important so this morning 610 and by all means since we're close to the prior low here at uh, 597.50 you break that then it's you know your a b c leg and you're you're going way down at that point semiconductors were really really weak yesterday they had been outperforming for such a long time and they were down to almost two and a half percent yesterday and uh, leading to the downside we saw uh, AMD had a big head fake move Qualcomm had a big head fake move yesterday you know really strong out of the gate both of those I didn't look at Nvidia but I think it was the same thing a lot of stocks you know blew out of the hole right out of the gate and then they faded it the whole day and gave it all back so now we are inside this gap we've got a large volume over price bar here at 304 and I think that's going to be your first big level of support but to really get things back on track got to get back above uh, the top of the gap but at this point I mean just from a technical standpoint once you enter a gap your default is we're going to fill the gap. So just be aware of these uh, intermediate little support level levels and don't let those distract you from the main goal or the main objective once you're in the gap. Yeah, you may get a little bounce here at 304, but you got to be leaning to the downside once you're in a gap that you know what you know any bounces aside you expect this thing to fill on your stops for sure but once you enter a gap you expect to fill the gap and then you got to have price prove that it's not going to do that in order for you to change your mind uh docusign this was the one that was the big head fake at least for me yesterday you know, breaking into this big gap and then they faded it. So if uh, if the market is going to get all squirrely now, heading into the end of the year, this may come back down here towards 135 and test the prior lows. If there's going to be a Santa Claus rally and everything gets, you know, CPI is good, Powell is good, you know, go for the go for the gold. 
at the end of the year and you break back above 155, I think you can try it again. But right now, um, I mean, that was a quick trade. Got long, got stopped out. So I'm out of that now. But I got another alarm set at 155 ready to go if there is, you know, some kind of all clear moment because uh, the risk reward is significant. You got your first target way up at uh, 185. That's 30 bucks right there. And if everything gets going, then you got another target up at 235. So even if it's just a rug pull, back test, and down, you still got $30 of upside just, just, just with that move. Quickly now, ARC. Like I said, I'm, I'm bearish on ARC. Not because I don't like Kathy. It's because of the holdings that she has. You know, high, super high valuation, no earnings. You know, we're going to change the world, but that's going to be in five or ten years. I don't think that works in this environment with with uh, liquidity tightening. I think there's going to be a flight to quality. Uh, you know, solid companies with earnings power. I think those are going to work. And I think uh, the art complex is not going to work. In fact, it hasn't worked all year. So now it's just, I think it's going to accelerate. We had move down, bear flag, move down, bear flag, came right up to 45 to back test the breakdown, right? Breakdown, back test, fail. So that's where we are this morning. And as we go across the art complex, we had a breakdown in uh, on the arc G. I just have the weekly chart here, but I think any kind of bounces aside, I think this is going lower. Arc flagship with all the Tesla. Uh, breakdown, bear flag, breakdown, bear flag, breakdown. Kickback rally that got back up above 100, which was the back test, but then failed, right? Yesterday afternoon, we broke above and then broke back below. That's a bearish move. Why? Because you didn't hold support back here at uh, 100. So I think you can be short ARC K against 100. And if, you know, Tesla makes that move down into the high 800s, you're certainly going to see ARC K move a lot lower. And then let's wrap it up here with uh, the ARC W. Same kind of technical action. In fact, I had it drawn in the chart. Breakdown, bear flag, breakdown, bear flag, breakdown, bear flag, kickback rally that reached all the way up close to 137.50, which was resistance, and then a big reversal yesterday uh, back down out of this bear flag. Uh, you see the, I don't have it drawn in here, but there's a gap. So if it were to fill that gap at a minimum, I think it's going to come back and test this 122.50. And if I was uh, a trader and I was interested in that, you get another break below 122.50, a break below this low. I think this time around it doesn't hold and I think it goes much, much lower. So let's wrap it up there. Uh, I hope you found the information beneficial. Keep at the top of your mind, market conditions are changing. And so I think you got to get out of the mindset of, if you are of the mindset, because it's worked for, you know, two years, buy every dip, buy every dip, buy every dip. That's fine. Just have your stop ready because I expect there to be some choppy trading and then, uh, uh, a bifurcation in the market where, uh, yes, some of the, the good stocks can still work in this environment, 
but I think they've got to have solid earnings support. I mean, go look at Peloton. Go look at Pinterest. Go look at ARC. They're not working, and um, I don't expect them to work, not because they're not good companies. It's because they don't have any earnings power to support the valuation, and people are taking a, a fresh look at it and bailing out. So this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Let's have a good wrap up to the week. Let's see where CPI takes us. And don't forget, Friday afternoon, two to four is your read on risk sentiment. Are traders saying, yeah, I'll be, I'll be long over the weekend, no problem. Or are they saying, you know what, let's get the F out of here and pick up the pieces on Monday. That last two hours of trading is really, really important in that respect. So have a good day of trading. Talk to you next time. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass.